Good afternoon here at As Electronica Home Delivery. My name is Sandra and I welcome you here in our new main exhibit, Understanding Artificial Intelligence. For today's segment, I want to show you one part of this exhibit called Anatomy of an AI System. You can see it already behind me and I'm going to tell you in a moment what this is all about. First, I would like to introduce this topic by uh, the two people who designed it, Kate Crawford and Vladan Jolar. I hope I pronounced it correctly. He's a Russian, she is from uh, Britain. And they worked on this project for quite some time. They tried to come up with a way to show everyone what is behind an artificial intelligence system. And to describe this, they picked one that most of us or a lot of us already have in their homes the Amazon Echo Dot. They did this in the year 2018 and it's still as relevant as it was back then two years ago and even more so I would say because uh, the more the technology advances the less we actually understand what is behind it all. Because we are the end user, we are the ones who use the product, we are the ones who uh, only get to see the cylinder sitting in our living room, but not all the processes that were necessary before this to happen, uh, that it actually may, uh, it's actually not that easy to just produce this one little dot. That's it. There's a lot going on behind the scenes. But before we dive into it, I want to introduce this map to you a little bit more, starting with, as I said before, the end user. We are right on top of this diagram. It's even taller than I am. I can just point to it. So we are the user. We are the human operator, as it is called in this map. Operator, why is that term used here? Because maybe some of you have heard it already. Maybe some of you have been to Ars Electronica or heard how AI systems work and how they train, how they develop. It's unlike a computer system where you write a program and that's it. An AI system constantly develops. It learns, it, uh, it grows. And how does it grow? Well, in the case of Amazon Echo, it listens. You ask something, for example, Alexa, the voice of the AI system, you ask Alexa, please play some music. And the Echo Dot responds with OK and will play the music uh, or it will not. Uh, it was not able to understand you and it will ask again. And with every question asked, with every task uh, successfully completed, uh, Alexa gets smarter. So all the data from us, all the questions we ask, all the interaction is stored and used to train the AI system. But before the system even comes into being, we need to take uh, into consideration how it is built. And that's why I'm gonna take you on the first part of this map called the production. The middle part is the usage and the third part is the recycling. We're gonna go through each one of those briefly because if you want to look at this map in detail, it would take hours. There are videos of this map online from Kate Crawford presenting it. And if you want to, you can even download it from home. So this is a free version of this map. It's a PDF. You can go to Anatomy of an AI system and you can download the map to look along if you want to. So let's start with the very first part here. So what do we need in order to build such a system, to build such a computer, such an AI system? Well, to start at the very basic, we need the elements. We need the periodic table of elements. You know, for a computer, we need lead, for example. For batteries, we need lithium. Two of the elements found uh, in, on our Earth, but there are many, many more that are necessary. For example, we also need potassium, we need um, some uranium even, so very dangerous materials also to mine. And when you think about your Echo Dot, you don't think, okay, why do I need radioactive material for it? Well, you need it for the components that it is made of. To get those components, we need workers. So uh, we actually have workers mining. For example, the miners work those um, work in the mine shafts, uh, produce uh, and make use of the Earth's gift, so to say, and give them, uh, so to say, produce more than we need actually. And those materials, in raw form, they are called ore. So, for example, iron ore we have uh, are then refined and go to the next line of workers. So they used 
uh, certain triangles to show what's going on, the refinery process, from the mining, the ore, to producing the metal, to producing components, producing even more components, to the finished product, and then the product is refined again. So it's quite a long process to just get the raw materials for the echo dot. It's just a start. And if you think about the conditions those materials are often mined, uh, they are not the best. So they are dangerous, talking about radioactivity, for example, toxic materials, there are health hazards included. Of course, cancer is one of those. So those workers really risk their life sometimes to produce and deliver the goods we need for our everyday life. And what do they get for it? Well, that's sadly not much. Um, we have a table here that says, for example, uh, something about the income distribution of workers that take part in the process of developing the Amazon Echo and distributing it, of course, and recycling it. At the very bottom, we have us, the unpaid workers, as I mentioned before, the trainers of the AI system, but also the workers in the mines, they don't get a lot. So they are really like on the lowest part here with $200 US dollars per month and sometimes even less. And when we go up here, we have, for example, the software developers we have uh, with $9,200 a month. That's quite a gap already. But then we jump to the chief executive in the US, which is Jeff Bezos for Amazon. We have $16,200 per month. So from $200 to this, that's quite a discrepancy, I would say. And of course, Jeff Bezos does not really have his hand in producing the product itself, but of course, he's the one responsible for distributing it, for uh, running Amazon. But one could argue that it could be a little bit more equally distributed because you see the lower part is much more filled here with wages that are below what one would seem uh, consider appropriate. And the higher it gets, the less people actually have something from the money. Right, but back to the production process. We are here with the refined product. So already quite a lot of steps in between, but that's just the beginning. In order for the product to reach us, we of course need transportation. So there are various methods of transportation, cargo ships, trucks, for example, trains, and of course they produce, uh, produce more or less pollution. So that's again another issue. It's not just the production process that's dangerous for our environment, for our health, but also the transportation costs on the environment and of course on the economy. But it's necessary, otherwise we would not receive any products. But maybe we could think about also with the new uh, idea of resourceful, of renewable energy, to think of cleaner ways to produce and transport those goods. It's difficult, but doable. Uh, and such a map can help you with that to really analyze the parts that are necessary to build such an AI system, to transport it, and maybe make it a little bit more obvious, like what needs to change. For example, we should uh, switch from the trucks more to eco-friendly train transportation, just as an example. Because without such a map, how would you even know what's going on? It was important what Kate Crawford and uh, Vladan Dollar came up with so that actually they tried to make it more accessible, to make it more visible what's going on behind the scenes. And we're still just at the basic transport. So that was the first step to transport it to Amazon to connect it with their internet infrastructure. So in order for an AI system to work, for Alexa to work, we need internet basic system, what we need for our everyday lives. And in order for it to work, we need the so-called submarine cable infrastructure, which is a very nice map here. We have over 900,000 kilometers of length of submarine cables and 300 cables in total that connect all different parts of the world. You see especially strong connection between Europe and North America, but of course also Asia and Africa, South America are connected as well. Without it, we would have no internet. We would have a hard time talking with Alexa because she would just not hear us. So that's one part, the internet structure and of course the infrastructure at Amazon itself. Because we need the web servers. We need to know uh, where Alexa is. Uh, Alexa needs to be able to communicate. They need to be able to know what's going on with Alexa. 
And Alexa itself is another subsystem at Amazon. It's an AI that has been trained for quite some time. So we have thousands of hours of training already inside Alexa before it's even delivered to us. And as we said before, it just continues learning. So the system is actually a deep neural network. You see here a visualization of this. So it has a lot of layers and it's quite similar to this map actually because we don't always know what's going on at each individual part of it. But that's how AI systems works, uh, work. We have more output and we don't really necessarily know what's going on between the input and the output. Yeah, so I could also go into detail of how an AI system is trained, but that would uh, breach the time frame we have here for this segment. And I would move on a little bit uh, further to actually one basic skill here without human language skills, we would not have even been able to train Alexa. That's also something that's not often considered that a computer system not only consists of programming, of training, but of basic human um, tasks of um, actually of basic human um, intelligence, you could say. And one of those, of course, for Alexa very, uh, that's very important is language. And of course, the skills necessary to understand language, to speak it, to uh, listen to it and actually uh, produce a coherent response. So that's the very basic of the AI system itself. Right now, so we have the language basis, we have the AI system that has been trained, we have the infrastructure at Amazon, we have the internet infrastructure. Now the product is delivered to us again. So we have again transportation costs which I mentioned before already, and we continue training the system. Until one day, maybe Alexa breaks, sometime something happens, uh, it just stopped working, and we need to decide what to do with it next. The obvious choice, of course, would be to recycle it. So now we move on to the last part of this map, to the abandoned devices. Some of them just get thrown away, which is quite a waste because the components used in producing Alexa, uh, the Echo Dot, can often be mined again and repurposed for different electronical gadgets, for example. So that's one strand here of the three. It's uh, recycled, it's uh, separated into e-waste, in normal waste, for example, the components are used for other computers, you could say, again, or for any device that also needs, for example, a CPU, or the raw materials could also be mined again, maybe lithium can be used again, or lead, or any other um, element. Yeah, and what cannot be used anymore, of course, goes to waste collectors. So we have, again, transportation to various collection, um, waste collection systems. There's, of course, also, again, separation process going on. Something uh, will, of course, be used again, can be used again. Something will end up in a landfill, but that decides of what it is made for. So recovering is also a very important issue here. So you could also, for example, repair it and sell it again as a whole, or you can sell the individual parts of it when it is dismantled into components or the product. Of course, it could also be dangerous when there are materials, as said before, that are still toxic to, uh, to humankind, and we need to be careful where to put it, where to use it again, and also the landfills are not a permanent solution, but as uh, the better it is filtered, the better it is recycled, the less waste actually ends up in those landfills. So we also have to take that account that if you throw it away, that's not the end for this product, it can still have another life, or at least its parts can have different uses. Yeah, so that was a very brief introduction to this very, very detailed map, and even the producers said it's not complete. So there are still a lot of steps that we don't know that are still in the dark, but it's a very good and very focused, detailed first step of what we can do to understand what's going on with one small echo dot. And just think of all, all the other electronic devices we have at home. So understanding that is important for our um, consciousness, I would say also to buy such products, to recycle them, to reuse them, and not just throw them away and not, never think about the beginning or the end of such a product again. Yeah, so I hope you uh, had to take 
um, got to take away something from this brief introduction. As I said, download the map if you want to have a better view on it. And also there is a, a large essay written by Kate Crawford on this topic. There are several video presentations where she talks about how the map came to be. And it's definitely a very interesting project worthy of our attention, also for the future, especially. Thank you so, uh, for your attention and I wish you a nice afternoon and goodbye.